World History Lesson 4. During this lesson, we are going to be discussing civilizations along the Mediterranean coast. Our lesson objectives are identify the early civilizations that developed along the Mediterranean coast, identify the characteristics of these early cultures, identify the unique contributions of these early cultures, identify the similarities and differences of the presented civilizations. The Phoenicians. From about 1200 BC to 800 BC, the Phoenicians lived on the Mediterranean coast, north of Palestine. Phoenicia was a small region between mountains and the sea. The Phoenicians had little land for farming, but cedar trees were plentiful and could be used for building ships. The Phoenicians became skilled shipbuilders, navigators, in and seafaring merchants. The Phoenician merchants and traders became rich and built many great cities. They founded several city-states around the Mediterranean, and they all competed with each other. The Phoenicians' chief cities were Tyre, Sidon, and Byblos, and they were located on natural harbors. The natural harbors allowed Phoenicia to develop a society based on seafaring merchants and trading. They traded throughout the Mediterranean and traveled as far as the coasts of Europe and Africa. Although the Phoenicians traded goods found in other lands, such as wine, weapons, valuable metals, ivory, and slaves, their business focused around three products unique to their area. Lumber, glass, and purple dye from a snail native to their coast. The purple dye known as Tyrian, purple, became their trademark and became a favorite color of royalty. As a seafaring people, the Phoenicians built many colonies throughout the Mediterranean to promote trade. They founded colonies at Sardinia, Sicily, Malta, Cadiz, and Carthage, which became the greatest and most important. Many historians believe that the Phoenicians may have sailed around the tip of Africa and to America. In 842 BC, the Assyrians eventually conquered the Phoenicians, but Phoenician influence was evident for many centuries afterward. The Phoenician Alphabet the Phoenicians were known as the missionaries of civilization because of their role in spreading the culture and ideas of the civilization that they came in contact with through trade. As merchants, the Phoenicians needed a system of writing that could quickly and efficiently record their business transactions. They are best known for developing a simple alphabet of 22 letters that replaced the cuneiform alphabet that had more than 500 characters. The Phoenician alphabet was phonetic, meaning that one sign equaled the sound. The word alphabet comes from the first two letters of the Phoenician alphabet, Aleph and Beth. As the Phoenicians traveled through the, throughout the Mediterranean, they introduced their alphabet to the many cultures they encountered. The Greeks adopted the Phoenician alphabet, but would change the form of some of the letters. This simpli simplified alphabet was one of the greatest contributions of the Phoenicians. The Assyrians. From the end of Humar Humurabi's rule in 1750 BC until about 900 BC, Mesopotamia was invaded and ruled by different groups of people. Each new group brought with them their own culture and added it to the culture established by the Babylonians and Sumerians. The Assyrians were a warlike people and quickly built a huge empire. From an earlier people known as the Hittites, the Assyrians learned how to use iron to make more powerful weapons. It was much stronger than the copper or bronze metals used by less advanced civilizations. The Assyrians used iron to make spears, swords, and arrows, and their well-trained army was successful in battle. The Assyrian army was divided into foot soldiers, cavalry, soldiers on horseback, and archers with bows and arrows. Each group also had chariots, two-wheeled horse-drawn vehicles. In addition to being armed with iron spears and swords, Assyrian soldiers also wore iron helmets and breastplates. During battle, they used battered rams to break through the city gates. The Assyrians also terrorized their army enemies using cruelty and violence. They beheaded their enemies and made slaves of soldiers conquered in battle. Many people feared the Assyrians so much that they chose to pay tribute, offering gifts or money to the king of Assyria rather than fight. By 900 BC, the Assyrians conquered the Fertile Crescent in Egypt and established a large empire. 
With the money and taxes collected from the people they conquered, the Assyrians were able to build their capital in Nineveh into the showpiece of the ancient world. Assyrian government. Assyrian rulers used terror in ruling their subjects. They were cruel and harsh and would destroy any rebellions and deported many people from their homeland. King Assurbanipal of Assyria once bragged, I am Assurbanipal, the great king, the mighty king, king of kings. To effectively govern their empire, the Assyrians divided it into provinces or small states. The governor who was responsible to the king ruled each state or province in his name. The governors collected taxes from the people and enforced the laws of the king. The Assyrians built a system of roads to allow trade and military troops to move to any part of the empire swiftly. The Assyrian Empire lasted 150 years before it was destroyed by its own size. After the king's death, it was too difficult to hold such a large empire together, and numerous invaders challenged the Assyrians. In 612 BC, the Assyrian city of Nineveh was captured and destroyed by the Chaldeans. Assyrian Libraries the Assyrians were great builders. The capital of the Assyrian Empire, Nineveh, was a walled city that became famous as the largest city of its day. Azurbanipal, an Assyrian king, built a great library at Nineveh and connect, collected the knowledge and achievements of many of the civilizations in the ancient world. One of the world's largest libraries and contained a collection of more than 25,000 clay tablets from throughout the Fertile Crescent. The Assyrians copied and edited many of the literary, literary works of Babylonia. Dictionaries that contain the same words in several languages have helped scholars to better understand Mesopotamian writing and thus the ancient cultures of the Fertile Crescent. In 616 BC, the Chaldeans seized control of the city of Babylon. They captured and destroyed Nineveh and overthrew the Assyrian Empire. Many people throughout the Fertile Crescent celebrated the news of Nineveh's destruction. The Hebrew prophet Nahum said, And it shall come to pass that all, all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee, and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for thee? Thy shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. Thy people are scattered upon the mountains, and there is none to gather them. Chaldeans the Chaldeans gained control of the entire Fertile Crescent and created what was known as the Second Babylonian Empire. One of the greatest Chaldean rulers, King Nebuchadnezzar, expanded the Chaldean Empire as far west as Syria and Canaan. He also defeated the Egyptians and captured Jerusalem, where 15,000 Jews were captured and sent to Babylon as slaves. The city of Babylon became the Chaldean capital and the center of the new and powerful empire. Nebuchadnezzar made Babylon the most beautiful city in the ancient world, and it possessed walls that were 300 feet high and 80 feet wide and closed the city. The Chaldean Empire flourished while Nebuchadnezzar ruled. After the king died in 562 BC, civil wars and weak kings led, by, led to the overthrow of the Chaldean Empire. The book of Daniel in the Bible describes how Babylon was destroyed. A young Hebrew named Daniel told King Belshazzar that the mysterious words written on the wall said that his days were numbered and that his kingdom would be conquered by a mighty empire. In 539 BC, the Chaldeans were overthrown. The Chaldean Empire became part of the Ch Persian Empire when King Sirius II seized Babylon. Chaldean architecture. During the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldeans constructed the famous Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. According to legend, these lush rooftop gardens were designed and built to please the homesick wife of the king. The king had trees and shrubs planted on terraces that rose 75 feet above the Babylonian plain and were visible from any point in Babylon. These magnificent gardens were watered by a complex system of pumps that pump water from a nearby river. Astronomy. 
the Chaldeans continued the Babylonian practice of recording accurate observations of the stars. The highest building in the city of Babylon was a 300 foot high ziggurat or temple tower. Many scholars believe that this temple tower inspired the story of the Tower of Babel in the Bible. From this temple, the priests studied the movements of the planets and the heavenly bodies. They recorded their observations of the stars and made maps showing the position of the planets and the faces of the moon. The Chaldeans followed the Babylonian belief in astrology, the belief that the placement of the stars influences a person's life. The Chaldeans, adding to the work of earlier civilizations, contributed to the science of astronomy. Persian conquers Cirrus. The ancient civilization of the Persians originated in the grass plains of Central Asia before migrating to the Middle East. Cyrus, who was a powerful king, made Persia a massive empire. He became known as Cyrus the Great for his achievements. His armies conquered an empire that stretched from the Mediterranean Sea to Afghanistan and from the Arabian Sea north to the Caspian and Aral Seas. He added northern Mesopotamia, Syria, Can Canaan, and the Phoenician cities to his empire. King Cyrus would bring an end to the Jews' capt captivity in Babylonia. Cyrus allowed the Jews to return to Jerusalem in 538 BC under Persian rule. The Jews rebuilt their city and temple and were permitted to practice their religion. Under later kings, the Persian Empire grew until it stretched from the Nile River to Egypt to the Indus River of India. The empire was more than 3,000 miles and second to none. The Persians ruled more than 50 million people, however, which made it difficult to govern. Darius expands the empire. The Persian king Darius I expanded and strengthened the Persian empire. Like the Assyrians, King Darius I appointed satraps or governors to govern each province. To keep an eye on all his officials, Darius hired government inspectors who reported regularly to the king. These inspectors became known as the eyes and ears of the king as they reported to him directly. To encourage trade among the people of the empire and improve the movement of soldiers, King Darius also built a network of roads throughout his empire. This helped unify his huge empire and encourage trade. Persia was one of the few early civilizations to use a standard currency as a medium of exchange. This made it easier for merchants to do business throughout the region. For the first time, people no longer had to use the barter system and had a good standard to sell their products. In the barter system, people had to trade goods for goods in order to trade with each other. Unlike the Assyrians, however, the Persian treated the people they conquered fairly and were tolerant rulers. They did not destroy the cities that they conquered or steal from the people. Conquered peoples were allowed to keep their own languages, customs, and religion. The Persians expected that in return for this tolerant attitude, the people they, that they conquered would pay their taxes and obey Persian laws. Persians and Greeks in 499 BC, King Darius went to war with the Greeks living in Ionia in Asia Minor. The Greeks of Ionia had revolted against Persian rule. When the Ionian Greeks asked the peoples of Greece to help them, Athens sent warships to their aid. King Darius was so angered at Greece for helping Ionia that he sent 600 ships and thousands of soldiers to invade Greece. Although the Greeks were outnumbered, they managed to defeat the forces of Darius. After Darius died, his son Xerxes led the forces of the Persian army to conquer the Greeks in 480 BC. Xerxes also failed to conquer Greece. This failure eventually led to a weakening of the Persian Empire. Fun facts. The Spartans' opposition of the Persians under King Xerxes at the Battle of Thermopylae is a popularly known battle, though the facts are often disregarded to make the event more dramatic. The 300 Spartans actually had the aid of 700 Thespians and a few thousand other Greeks, including Thebans, Helots, which are Spartan slaves, Arcadians, and Phoenicians fighting along them. Demophilius led the 700 Thespians and refused to surrender or retreat. He and his soldiers were slaughtered besides the famed 300 Spartans. Religion and culture. Of all the Persians' cultural contributions, their religion was the most original. 
In religion, the Persians followed the teachings of a Persian prophet named Zoroaster, who worshipped one god named Ahura Mazda. Zoroaster taught that human beings had a choice between doing good and doing evil, and saw life as a struggle between the forces of good and evil. Ahura Mazda, the wise lord, was the supreme god who stood for truth, goodness, and light. Ahriman was the evil spirit that represented darkness. At the end of time, all souls would be judged according to which side they had chosen. Followers of Ahura Mazda would be rewarded by entering paradise. Followers of Ahriman would be sent to a dismal underworld. Zoroaster's followers considered him to be a prophet. A collection of sacred, sacred writings of their religion are found in the sacred book called the Zend Avista. The Persian religion belief, religious belief about heaven, hell, and final judgment are similar to the teachings of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The Persians adopted Zoro Zoroastrianism as the official religion of the empire. Persian roads. By maintaining their vast empire, the Persians stimulated a cultural exchange among many people. The Persians adopted many of the ideas from the civilizations that they conquered. From the Assyrians, they learned how to subdivide their empire into provinces and to rule their vast empire efficiently. Also, like the Assyrians, they continued the practice of connecting their empire with a system of roads which reached all parts of the empire. The royal road built by the Persian Empire connected Persia with Asia Minor and thus connected India with Persia for trade so that the East met West. Money Economy To improve trade, the Persians set up a common system of weights and measures. The Persians also borrowed another idea, the use of coins from a people known as Lydians. The manufacture and use of metal coins as a medium of exchange promoted trade and made the Persian Empire prosper. Through their tolerance and good government, the Persians brought stability to their empire not found in earlier civilizations. The Persians helped to preserve the ideas from earlier civilizations for the future. What's next? Take the time to go back and review the lesson on your own. After your review, complete the lesson review for the lesson and submit for grading. Remember, your submission should follow all the rules for standard written English. All submissions must be written in your own words and sources used cited at the end. How to cite a source in APA format. When you reference a source within an APA style of paper, whether it is using a direct quote repurposing an image, or simply referring to an idea or theory, you should insert an in-text citation. This includes the author's surname and the date of publication within parentheses straight after a direct quote. The URL citationmachine.net will assist you in creating citations.